Well, hey, Summit, it's a pleasure to be with you on this virtual Good Friday service. And uh, it's been an interesting couple of weeks, hasn't it? It's, uh, it's been an interesting time, and I hope you guys are staying safe at home and uh, also that you're staying sane. In our house, we've been enjoying the weather, this random sunny weather as it's been popping up, and we're taking the opportunity to take long walks. And personally, I've been really enjoying the chance to spend a lot of time with my eight-month-old daughter, Charlotte. She's just in a really fun stage and age, and she's growing really quickly, and it's, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Ashley's working from home, too, and so me and her have kind of etched out and carved out different portions of the dining room table to work on, and uh, we're having a lot of fun. It's a good time, but as you well know, it's not life as usual. And so uh, I'm glad again to be with you today bringing uh, the word to you from different prayers that Jesus prays as he is on the cross. And so today, we're going to be looking at the first one in the Gospel of Luke, in Luke chapter 23. You know, these prayers are short. They're simple prayers, but they're powerful prayers, and there's a lot here that we can learn. So let's turn to Luke chapter 23, and we're going to read verses 33 and 34 together. That's Luke chapter 23 verses 33 and 34. It says this, And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. One common question asked of this prayer is, Who exactly is Jesus asking the Father to forgive? And there's three good answers to this question that I think are all true. First, Jesus asked the Father to forgive the Romans. You know, ultimately, it would have been the Roman guards who would have put Jesus on that cross. They would have been the ones to nail him to the cross in his hands and his feet. And we read elsewhere that Roman guards, while he was imprisoned, mocked him and beat him. They flogged him. They put on a robe, a purple robe, and a crown of thorns on him. We read right before this in the Gospel of Luke that Jesus was brought before Pilate, the man who was supposed to do justice in the land. But instead of seeing that Jesus was guiltless, he handed him him over to be murdered. But instead of Jesus on the cross doing what anybody around him would expect him to do and cursing the Romans, he doesn't. He asks the Father that he would forgive his murderers. Second, Jesus asks the Father to forgive the Jews. You know, just a few days before this happens in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus was walking into the city of Jerusalem, and the people gathered together there in the city as he was walking in and called out to him, Hosanna in the highest, and they praised God. We just celebrated this last Sunday, Palm Sunday. They believed Jesus to be their Messiah, the one who would deliver them from the Romans. When Jesus made it clear that his kingdom was not of this world, though, they left and they turned on him. They decided instead, when given the opportunity to spare Jesus, they decided to spare a murderer and a rebel, Barabbas. Jesus was the Son of God, but the Jewish leaders, the scribes, the Pharisees, they couldn't see that. Instead, they had him arrested, and they falsely accused him of many things. They brought him before Pilate and asked for his crucifixion. Jesus is asking that his accusers, those who sought his death, be forgiven by the Father. Jesus doesn't condemn those who crucify him. He asked that the Father forgive their ignorance. They were blind, but Jesus was the Son of God, even if they couldn't see that. And third, Jesus asked the Father to forgive you. You know, right after Jesus prays this short, powerful prayer, we read that people gambled for his clothes. You know, they did this in those times in order to further humiliate the person who was being crucified. They would crucify the person naked, and the last thing that they would see were their last earthly possessions being joyously gambled away. 
This crowd even mocked Jesus, saying that he should come down and save himself. We see that right after these verses. You know, I'd like to think that I wouldn't be part of that crowd, that I wouldn't join in the shouting and the mocking, but the truth is, apart from Christ, we're all in that crowd. By our sin and by our rebellion, we all put Jesus on that cross, and frankly, if we were there, we probably wouldn't have felt bad about it. But the good news of the gospel is that while we were still sinners, while we were mockers and revilers, Christ died for us. On the cross, Jesus prays that the Father would forgive his murderers, that he would forgive his accusers, that he would forgive you. Have you prayed that prayer for yourself? Let's pray. Jesus, we ask for forgiveness. You went to the cross because of our sin. Thank you for doing that. You are so gracious. You're so loving. You died the death that we could not die for ourselves. And while we were sinners, you died for us. So, Father, forgive us. It's in Jesus' name we pray.